Welcome to Overanalyzing Vlogs, where I think too much about something. Or do I? I get quite a bit of fan mail from people who say that studying or reading philosophy makes them sad. It tends to be people who are reading things like Sartre's Being and Nothingness and Albert Camus' The Myth of Sisyphus. Lots of books with black and white on the cover with black and white motifs. I don't know why that is. Because a lot of these philosophers confront what they see as the pointlessness of human existence. They think, oh, human life is pointless, there's no God, no objective morality, we're all just sort of stuck here. Sartre's phrase, we are condemned to be free, what are we going to do about it? Like, the opening sentence of Camus' The Myth of Sisyphus is, there is but one truly serious philosophical problem, and that is suicide. So, you know, a lot of these thinkers deal with pretty heavy stuff. And understandably, that can make you a little sad sometimes. Or even if you're reading political philosophers who are aware of just how messed up the world can be sometimes, that can make you anxious or sad, and that's, that's fair enough. One thing I definitely want to say is that a lot of people, a lot of philosophy students go through that stage where they're like, oh wow, some of this stuff can be pretty really depressing. Like, I had a friend who I studied philosophy with for years, and uh, when we studied together, when we started studying, he was Catholic. And over the course of studying philosophy, he he gave up his religion, he lost his faith. However you want to put it, he, he became no longer religious. And that was accompanied by a period of... Um, melancholy, maybe? More like introspection? Sadness, I suppose. That doesn't happen to everybody. Some people keep their religion or even acquire religion as they study philosophy, but it did happen to him, and it did make him a little bit sad for a while. So if studying philosophy is making you sad sometimes, you're not alone. That's the first thing. And certainly Camus in The Myth of Sisyphus has a more technical response to that feeling of anxiety and dread. But there's a more personal story that I can share with you that might help a little bit. So when I was studying philosophy, I also got the chance to study some astrophysics. And one night, as part of the astrophysics class, we all went to the observatory on the outskirts of town. And when I was at the observatory, I looked through a telescope and I saw the planet Jupiter. I didn't see a picture of it. I didn't see an artist's impression of it. I, I saw, I saw Jupiter with my own eyes. I, this tiny orange dot, and it had three moons that I could see. The fourth one was around the back, like little diamonds just crossing the face of it in a plane. And the thought hit me, standing in that observatory looking at Jupiter, that the planet Jupiter had been there long before I was born, it was going to be there long after I died. And no matter what I did with my life, if I failed everything I wanted, if I accomplished nothing with my life and, and just died in misery and, and abject poverty and humiliation or wasted my life, or if I became the most good, influential, famous person who's ever lived, nothing I could ever do would stop Jupiter just quietly turning, getting on with its own business. It would always be there, and nothing I could do would ever change that. And the same was even more true of the rest of the universe. Most of what exists was just totally indifferent to me. And that made me feel that in the biggest possible sense, in a cosmic sense, in 50-foot letters of fire, no pressure. There's no no pressure. I thought, my life's not a test. It's not something that I can get right or wrong. It's an opportunity. And it's up to me to live the best way I can and, and try and do what makes me happy. So sometimes when I get anxious or when I get sad, I try and remember that, that image of Jupiter, just what that looked like, and remember that I can take a step back and get some perspective and that it's not, it's never the end of the world. Even the end of the world wouldn't be the end of every world. That's something that helps me personally. It might not work for you. I'm not a religious person, so I, I don't have that kind of faith to draw on. I know a lot of people who have faith really draw on that. That helps them when they're sad or sort of cosmically anxious. And I guess uh, I've studied some Christian theology, so I, I know that maybe if, if you were a Christian, you might be able to say, well, you know, God's love is unconditional. Maybe that's always there for me. Maybe that's the rock that you lean on in tough times. I'd be interested to hear in the comments from people uh, of other religions and, uh, and and Christians as well and people of no faith about what gets you through that so the sort of dark, anxious, cosmic anxiety moments. 
So if doing philosophy does make you sad, just remember that you're not alone, and that happens to everyone sometimes, and that there's a sense of perspective to be had about these things, and also that studying philosophy can make you very, very happy as well. I, I find that I'm fantastically happy when I learn new things through reading philosophy, or when I acquire a new way of looking at things and think, oh my god, everything I read before this was totally wrong, I found something new, this is wonderful. And of course, if you are having really bad thoughts, if you are having suicidal thoughts or thoughts of hurting yourself, you know, please do speak to someone about those things. You, you can email me if you really have to, you know, my email address is always there, and, and sometimes that does happen. Fans write to me with really very serious things, and usually my response is, I'm kind of not qualified and you should probably talk to somebody more professional, but sometimes it helps to even just bounce these ideas off someone, so if you really do need to talk to somebody, absolutely do, you know. Connection with another human being, that's, that's how, that's what makes people really happy, isn't it? That's what makes me happy about learning as well, I guess, is there's that fantastic quote from the History Boys, where, I'm probably paraphrasing, where Hector says, one of the best things about reading is when you feel like a hand has come out from a page and taken yours, and you find some way of thinking or feeling that you thought was peculiar to you, and you find that someone else has had it all along. That's one of the reasons I love reading Shakespeare, actually, and one of the reasons that, as an actor, I'm so absolutely mad about Shakespeare, is that almost every human emotion you'll find it somewhere in Shakespeare, and you'll think, oh my god, that's how I feel, and here someone else has not only put it into words, something I can never express, but put it into the most beautiful words. So all of that's a very higgledy-piggledy, not very structured lesson, I guess, not really a lesson, chat, advice, that I can give if studying philosophy is making you sad. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Oh, am I?